Okay, let's now make sense of WordPress and start using it and installing things onto it. Um, the, the way to get onto your website is the same for every WordPress website, basically. Um, so we've created a dummy uh, website called stagingfree.websquadron.co.uk. It's a staging site where we can do whatever we want on Twin. It's not going to mess up our main website. Okay, the way you do it is you have your domain name, which is stagingfree.websquadron.co.uk forward slash WP hyphen admin, WP, the middle dash admin. So if you've got a website and it's called um, wonderfulcakes.com, it's going to be wonderfulcakes.com forward slash WP, little dash in the middle hyphen admin. So that's a really great way to remember what your login address is. And once you've logged in, you put in your username or your email address, and then you put in your password. And this is going to be the username and password you put in when you first installed WordPress. So make sure you kept a note of it. Uh, of course, if you know if you've lost it or forgotten it, you can reset it or do a fresh installation. But try not to forget it. Now, when you come into WordPress, you will actually see lots and lots of information. Things like this. OK, that's going to be all over your website, you know, and it's just going to have lots and lots of screens and information. And it can be a little bit like, whoa, do I need to worry about any of this? No, you don't. OK, just when you when you're into your WordPress dashboard at the top, you'll have what's known as screen options. Click that and just untick everything. OK, I wish there was a way that you could just click one button and it all vanished. But yeah, just get rid of everything there. All right. You don't really need to have anything visible on here. If you're a shop or you've got appointments or bookings or you're selling courses or things like that, some of your plugins that will add on to, that you can add on to the website, some of that information on here will be quite good. So how many sales have you had you know, in the last uh, two months, for instance? What's your biggest selling product? That's important here, but right now, we'll leave it pretty clean. Okay, very quickly on the dashboard, uh, you, you will have the options like posts, media pages, OK, some of the items on here are based on plugins I've already added onto the website, and I'm going to talk to you about those in a moment. But mainly, you're going to have posts, media pages, you'll have appearance, you'll have plugins, users, tools and settings. OK, at the top over here in the top right, you have the option to edit your profile or to log out. Log out's pretty obvious, right? But let's now just very quickly go through all of the settings that you should take account of. I'm going to go to settings and I'm going to go to general. Now, when I go over here, normally it will just say a WordPress website. It will probably have your, it might say your domain name and tagline might just say a WordPress website. I always change it to what is my site title? Web Squadron. What is my tagline? You don't have to have a tagline, okay? But if you want, put it here. This is really important now because we did the SSL certificate. Our site is secure. Look, we've got the padlock. Don't know if you can see it on the screen, but there's a padlock there. H-T-T-P-S. If it's missing the S for sugar, it is not secure. Nine times out of ten, your WordPress address and your site address will be missing the S. It will be like that. Okay? And what you need to do is just go in and put the S back in. Okay? You might think, hang on, am I tricking the system here? No, you're not tricking anything. Your site is secure, but sometimes WordPress automatic, automatically puts it as a HTTP. Just put the S in, okay? If you do that and you haven't got the site security certificate, you are going to get, it's not going to work for you, all right? You're going to get an error, so do it when you know your certificate is activated. Your administration email address, um, this is where you may decide um, if anyone joins your website or subscribes or well, they join your website, what role are they allowed to have? Don't change it anything more than just subscriber, okay? If you give them administrator or editor rights, they're going to be able to do a bit of havoc. Administrator is the same level I've got. God rights. I can do what I want on this website. Install, delete, activate, the works. Be careful of how many people you give that access to. Editor, they have lots of powers as well. But they can't add or remove plugins, which is very key because, you know, you don't want them to go and start adding stuff onto your website, which you don't want, or they've removed something you definitely needed. But again, 
you know, people like author contributors that, you know, author can add a post. So I only give that to people who are trusted in adding posts. You know, like you got a blog. You don't just want anyone to come on and go, I hate this website. Do you really want that on there? So bear that in mind, okay? You can set your time zone, you can set all these things. And at this point, you wanna hit save changes. Now, if you have changed the HTTP to be HTTPS, it will at that point log you out and you've gotta log back in. Don't worry, that's just WordPress going through the motions because it says, okay, you've changed my identity to a secure website. Yes, you are secure, let us continue. Yeah, it's, it's nothing to worry about. That's the general. You don't need to do anything in the writing setting down here. In the reading one, this is where you will prob it will probably say something like select, select for the home page and the post page. Once you've created your home page, okay, your or your landing page or whatever you want to call it, once you've created that, you go to settings, you go to reading, okay, down there, and you pick your home page. So if our home page was going to be called new, we would call it new. If your home page is called home, you select home, okay? Because until you select that, whenever anyone goes to your website, they're gonna see the default landing page that WordPress created, which is a very ugly bluey aqua color or something like that, okay? Right, let's now go to discussion. This is where if you are gonna have a blog website, you get to decide, are you gonna allow people to make comments? Now, um, we don't actually have any posts on here, on this website, and even if we did, we would be deactivating the fact that anyone can comment, so we're not worried about that. But if you are gonna have posts and you are gonna have people commenting, remember, you're gonna to have to moderate that, because there's always nasty people out there that troll or put comments that you don't really want on your website, so you might want to change it and say a comment is held for moderation. Can anyone post a comment? Yeah, okay, but there's still got to be moderation. It's got to be manually approved maybe. So work through and just decide on what works for you best. Now in media, not everyone does this, but I do. Nine times out of ten, when you go in, you're going to see values like 150 in all of these fields here. I change it to be 000. I untick also these boxes here. So untick, untick. Basically, it just looks like a plain page. And the reason I do that is whenever you add an image to WordPress, even if it's just one image, WordPress might make five or six copies of that one image because it's trying to cover all bases. But I want to be very clinical and manipulative in what images I add and the sizes I add them at. And I will worry about that when I need to. So rather than me add multiplying an image into six versions, I, I zero zero all of that out. Why is that important? Just because you've got hosting, which says you're allowed to build a website, there are some limitations to that. And if you start adding tons and tons of giant images, 10 megabytes in size, and we are gonna cover all of this about compressed images, big 10 megabyte images times by six or seven, now we're talking 60, 70 megabytes, Eventually, it's going to start to eat into your allowance, and it also could make your web page and your hosting very bloated and heavy. So, this is up to you whether you do this or not. Okay, a lot of people don't. I do because it's just the way I like to operate. Save changes as you go along. Permalinks. It goes without saying. Always make sure post name is fit, picked, picked. And the reason being is, look at these examples here. Let's say you've got a post about WordPress. Do you want it to have the word WordPress in there? Uh, yeah. Or do you want it to say archives123 or sample post or p equals123? I mean, come on, it makes sense, doesn't it? So go for post name, all right? And again, save the changes. Privacy, you don't need to worry about there, okay? Because we you can do a privacy policy and a cookies policy later on. So. In essence, that is the basic WordPress settings. Now go to, um, well, we can either edit profile over here in the top right, there we go, or we can go to users. And when I go to all users, what you will see is my user account because I'm the administrator. I'm gonna edit it. It's gonna be the same screen I would have got to if I had gone to edit profile over here. You can actually modify the way your WordPress dashboard looks. So I might decide I want to go for this color scheme, or maybe I want to go for that color scheme. Look, it's entirely up to you, all right? Don't spend a lot of time on this. It's not massively important. 
but you can modify it, okay? And you can also change your password if you want. So you might want to set a new password. It's always good to have one or two key administrators of your website who are almost in control of the users and what goes in and on your website, okay? If you want to add a new user, you go to users uh, on the left hand side and you click add new. So I will go in and this is where you set up your username and your email and you know this is where I tend to keep them the same. Um, your forename, your surname, you set the password up um, and you decide on well, what is their role. So are they going to have God rights or are they only going to have certain types of rights. So make sure you've mapped out who can do what because you don't want anyone to be able to have the ability to go in and delete everything. Okay, so in essence, we've gone over very quickly the uh, some of the options that you have for WordPress once you've installed it. 